Hi, everybody. My name is Diane Meyer. I'm the director of the Center to Advance Palliative Care. We're a national organization that uh, works to improve access to high quality palliative care for anybody living with a serious illness and for their families. And I'm really delighted today um, to have some time with my colleague, Dr. Chin Lin Ching who leads the palliative care program at Highland Hospital in Rochester, New York. Uh, and I had the uh, wonderful experience of meeting her when I happened to be up there giving a talk two and a half years ago. And we've stayed in touch ever since. Thank you, Diane. It's a, it's a real honor to be here this morning. I appreciate the invitation. Um, I am currently the medical director for the palliative care program at Highland Hospital, which is a community hospital affiliated with University of Rochester in New York. Um, I started there in 2010, but really um, became the associate director of the program in 2012. Became the director in 2018. Right. And when I met you, um, I'm trying to remember, it, it seems like prehistory right now, but a couple of years ago, was it? Maybe three? It was years a couple ago? of years ago. It was in, I had just become the director. I think it was in the spring. Um, of 2018? That, yes. Yeah. Yes. And um, I remember I was speaking and you were there at the lunch or, or the meal that we had afterwards and um we got the opportunity to speak and i was asking you about how things were going and was very struck and concerned by the things that <laughs> that you were not only telling me but that were visible on your face and your body language at the time and i wonder um if we might not start there um, about what what was going on then um, why were you so concerned? Um, what was the source of the challenges that you were facing? And this was, I guess, two and a half years ago now. It was, and I think back to that moment, um, and this is not hyperbole, it was like, you know, the fairy godmother coming down um, when she found Cinderella in tatters <laughs> and in tears. You, I think you found me at perhaps the lowest point in my professional career. Um, I was so burnt out that I didn't know which way was up. Um, so kind of backing up a little bit leading up to that moment, um, you know, between 2012 and 2018, our consult service uh, tripled in volume, but our staffing stayed the same. We had one attending and one APP doing wow. three times the work that we were used to doing. Um, and I think up to that point, it was always sort of our volume justified our existence. And so it was do more, be everything to everybody. Um, and, um, you know, before wellness and physician burnout became sort of the thing to talk about, I was already burnt out and I didn't know what to do. And um, I think that when we met, I was getting paged by my APP pretty much every hour with a new consult. And so I was thinking about going into the day with eight consults pending and 15 follow-ups and it was just her and I. Um, but then also sitting in that room, I think we were having lunch with other leaders in nursing homes and they were talking about palliative care programs and how to support palliative care programs. And, and there was just so much turmoil inside me. I was thinking about just irrationally how unfair everything felt that I felt like the the weight of the world was on my shoulders I had this program that was really successful on paper but I was just really trying to hold together um, yeah. and so I think that's what was happening I saw you I had been to three previous CAPC uh, conferences so you were sort of my idol and there we were I was finally meeting you I was introducing myself to you and then uh, it all just kind of overflowed the emotions. Yeah. 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 I remember vividly asking about your family and you saying you had at that time, I guess, a six-year-old or a five-year-old and a two-year-old mm -hmm. and yeah. that you weren't able to see them. 
no. because of the hours you were working and that's mm -hmm. when something went click in my head this is not sustainable this is not healthy this has to stop i have to say chin Lin, as concerned as i felt about you as an individual and a colleague i felt that your reaction was um, maybe this is an overused term, a poster child for what was happening to the whole field. And really underscored my concerns about the sustainability of a field that takes young health professionals who are really committed to their fellow humans and to the relief of suffering and finally have a receptor site for that work and yet are treated as if we're an infinite resource. Um, something that would never happen with a surgeon, for example. You would never expect a surgeon to do triple the volume with the same staff. Uh, you, you would know that your outcomes would be worse. You would know that that surgeon would quit. You would know that you wouldn't be able to serve the community. But somehow in palliative care, there's this irrational belief on the part of um, the health systems that employ us that um, just add water and we can do more. Um, and so I was, I was struck both by what you were going through, by how sadly typical it is of what I had been seeing across the country, and then really challenged to say, well, you know, can CAPSI help in this situation? Because if we can't, um, we're not achieving our mission. So it was a challenge to both of us, I think, uh, to d do the assessment and then try to understand um, what strategies were effective in getting this to shift. Yeah, I really thought that I was doing all of the right things. You know, I was, um, our volumes were growing. I was going out there. I was making connections. I was you know, doing all the things that on paper we're supposed to do to make a successful program. Um, but I, the growing pains were overwhelming. We were all things to all people. And, right. and I think, um, you know, I think in a way it, it takes advantage of why we're drawn to palliative care. I think naturally we are very compassionate, um, empathic people, and that's why we're in this field. And so um, it almost takes advantage of our inability to walk away from um a dumpster fire if you will so yeah. we never abandon our patients right we would never walk away from a sticky situation and so um i never dreamed that even never making it home to put my kids to bed that i would ever be able to walk away from this program that i would i was willing to sacrifice my time with my kids and my family um to to make sure that this program was continuing to run the way that it was supposed to right and i think you're right it is a sort of um, unholy alliance between really the infinite level of suffering out there and patient need and the type of person that chooses to work in palliative care mm -hmm. who will always put the patient's needs ahead of everything else. Mm -hmm.